What's going on everybody? Welcome back to The Schmidt Show. Ethan Schmidt, your host and creator of The Schmidt Show. A place where we talk about sports, culture, and everything in between. Our first inaugural episode was a success. I can't thank y'all enough for your support. The second ever edition coming your way. We have a stacked slate this week. Let's get right into it. March may be over, but the madness isn't. The final four for the men's and women's college basketball championships happening this weekend. Some noticeable differences in the road to the final four for the men and the women. Only one seed in the men's tournament. Number one, Kansas making it as one of the last four teams. Two number one seeds lost in the Sweet 16. Of course, Arizona, the team down south, and Gonzaga, one of the favorites, if not the outright favorite coming in to possibly win it all, falling in. Baylor, the final number one seed, lost to UNC in the round of 32, while the women, three out of four of the number one seeds make it, setting up for some intriguing heavyweight bouts on the women's side. I'm excited for it. The men's final four down in the bayou, the big easy, New Orleans playing host to two incredible matchups. The number one seeded Kansas Jayhawks, Rock Chalk, Coach Bill Self leading this program to the final four, going up against the number two seeded Villanova Wildcats. Of course, this Wildcats team, no stranger to the moment whatsoever. Coach Jay Wright has led this program to a 20 and three record since 2016 in the NCAA tournament. Of course, Villanova winning it in 16 and 18 and right back here this time in New Orleans. Despite Villanova's success in recent years, I think I'm rolling with the Jayhawks. This Kansas team was able to dismantle a Miami team that came in red hot and won by 26. Villanova honestly got lucky. I was on the Houston Cougars in the Elite Eight, but Houston could not make a shot against Villanova. One for 20 from three. It looked like the Houston Rockets against the Golden State Warriors in the playoffs a couple years back and just absolutely embarrassing shooting performance from Houston. Villanova was able to escape, so I'm riding Kansas here, but this game does have a chance to be really close and Villanova is getting plus four and a half. I do lean that. I could see Kansas winning by three or four and this being a close matchup. Maybe that's just the fan in me that I want to see this game come down to the wire, but ultimately I think Kansas is the better team right now. Looking at the second matchup on the men's side, this game could possibly be an even more of a dandy than Kansas Villanova, number two seeded Duke Blue Devils, and the number eight North Carolina Tar Heels. These two teams, no strangers whatsoever. Actually, both programs have played 99 games. This will be the 100th meeting since Coach K took over Duke in the 80-81 season. Duke leads the all-time series 50-49. to Actually, the last time the Tar Heels were in the Final Four, they won it all back in 2017 right here in Phoenix. And I got to witness it. I was in attendance and actually got this collector's Coca-Cola can with the UNC logo on it. It says 2017 NCAA Division I Men's Basketball Champions. So that's pretty cool. Had to break it out this week for the Schmidt Show. With that being said, the Carolina Tar Heels have put on quite the run to get to this point, but I think that Coach K's last ride lives on and his team makes it to the final game, the national championship. I'm running with Duke. I do, again, want these games to be close. That's just the basketball fan of me. North Carolina is getting plus four. I do lean that direction. I think both of these games have a chance to be really close down to the wire. So we will ride with the underdogs, lay the points, 
and hope for instant classics this weekend, which it is all capable to do so. The championship game, number one Kansas against the number two Duke. And this game, if this is the matchup we get, you better buckle up. It will be everything and more. I'm so excited. I think Coach K goes out in style taking the Duke Blue Devils over Kansas. You know, I think that would just be the coolest story. And, you know, you couldn't script it any better for Coach K riding off into the sunset, cutting down the nets. I will take Duke over Kansas in the final. And, you know, a lot of people out there just have hate for Duke in the program. I, I'm indifferent and it, you know, that... That being the coolest story, Coach K getting the dub to finish out the season the champion, I'll take it. The women's Final Four in Minneapolis is set to be just as great as the men's final. And we have heavyweight slugfests ready to happen. UConn taking on Stanford and head coach Ariema in UConn 4-2 against Stanford and the NCAA tournament. I think you have to like UConn and especially their superstar and Paige Bukers. Returning home, grew up just 10 minutes away from Target Center where this tournament will wrap up. And I think UConn able to push on past Stanford. That game is pretty much a pick em. With the lines, you could just ride with the UConn money line there. South Carolina versus Louisville. Louisville has had an outstanding season, number one seed, but now running into the top seeded South Carolina Gamecocks. And I think that this team continues to roll. They are minus eight and a half favorites. The Gamecocks. I do like Louisville keeping it closer than that. Eight and a half is a lot of points to lay. I know the South Carolina team has destroyed teams all season long, but we will look for more close games and I'm running with the Louisville Cardinals plus eight and a half. That sets up the championship game, South Carolina versus UConn. And even though it would be quite the story for Paige Bukers to make her homecoming and cut down the nets, in Minneapolis, I think I have to go with the South Carolina Gamecocks to win it all in the Women's National Championship. This Gamecocks team has just dominated teams all season long, and you have to love head coach Don Staley and what she's been able to do with that program. The Gamecocks did last win it in 2017. And I think South Carolina will be the 2022 national champs. Next, we move on to our NFL talk. The National Football League has been cooking with gas this offseason, whether it's free agency, talk about the draft, or some sudden decisions that none of us really saw coming. First, let's talk about the latest news out of Tampa. Bruce Arians stepping down as the Bucks head coach. Todd Bowles elevated from defensive coordinator to the lead guy for Tampa. Arians handing off the keys to Bowles. Arians is supposed to be transitioning into a front office role for the franchise. And this is news that none of us really expected to happen as Arians went to the combine uh, doing all the offseason work that head coaches are doing in the NFL just for him to step down. And of course, this all comes with Tom Brady retiring for six weeks, not even the legend, the GOAT, deciding to return for yet another season. Now, that has led to some discussions about whether there was a rift between Bruce Arians and Tom Brady. You know, of course, these two paired up and won a Super Bowl in their very first season together and then last year losing such a close game to the eventual champions Los Angeles Rams it just didn't seem like this was a possibility that both of these two football legends were on the same page now this possible relationship riff said to be between Brady and Arians could all just be hype and headlines you know the two 
got together in Tampa and won a championship. And Tom Brady has seen career highs over a two season stretch in his two seasons with Tampa Bay after spending his whole career before that in New England. And now Todd Bowles taking over, getting a five year extension at the head coaching position. It could be that Arians just wanted Todd Bowles to be in a position of success and Brady had retired. Arians didn't want to leave the franchise, not in ruins per se, but to be in a possible down season and Todd Bowles not really being ready to be that head man again. But now Arians can comfortably step away Todd Bowles taking over, Brady back to pretty much run the offense and it should be successful as we've seen every year that Brady has been in the lead. Of course, with Arians stepping down after just coming back to the lead to coach again only three seasons ago, retiring again, he does leave behind quite the legacy in the NFL. Arians has always been a big advocate for diversity in the league and we see that front and center with him giving the keys off to Todd Bowles that five-year extension with the franchise and multiple other black coaches being a part of the staff in Tampa Bay now with Todd Bowles stepping in to the head coaching spot that adds another minority head coach in the NFL something that is desperately needed NFL free agency has started to wind down a little bit, cooling off on that front. The latest big signing being former Seahawks linebacker Bobby Wagner, a five-year, $50 million deal that could reach up to $65 million, signing with the defending champ Los Angeles Rams. That's a big pickup for the Rams. Wagner could have gone to plenty of other locations. To the victors go the spoils, I guess. The Rams with the massive pickup, their wide receiver and Odell Beckham Jr. Of course, going to be away from football for a bit after messing up his knee in the Super Bowl. And he is waiting to figure out his contract. Tyron Matthews still available, one of the best defenders in football it's been reported that the pittsburgh steelers are all in on tyron matthew for his services in the steel city we will have to see how that plays out so big name wide receivers still on the free agency board uh, we talked about beckham and then jarvis landry and julio jones who the titans let go wasn't too worried about that decision Definitely saves Tennessee some money and Jones didn't produce like he was expected to with the Titans last season. T.Y. Hilton, the grizzled veteran, been playing with Indianapolis for numerous years and now he is still yet to find a team a receiver I wouldn't mind having on my roster if you could get him at a good value. Uh, feel the same about Jarvis Landry. Upcoming on the NFL offseason agenda, of course, is the 2022 NFL Draft happening in Las Vegas for the first time ever. And it's less than a month away, folks. Of course, plenty of mock drafts flying around, but as far as everything I've heard and seen, it seems that the consensus number one overall pick will be Aiden Hutchinson, uh, the edge rusher out of Michigan, going to Jacksonville. Other than that, it's a toss-up. We have these quarterbacks, especially uh, Malik Willis and uh, Kenny Pickett gonna see where these guys end up falling who makes the big move taking a quarterback first in this draft a wide receiver heavy class that's for sure lots of players on the defensive side of the ball and in vegas this year i'm excited should be a fun show in sin city this segment of the schmidt show is called e-money's picks i've been giving my picks on twitter be sure to follow me at the ethan schmidt Primarily doing NBA spread picks and prop bets. And for those that have been riding with me, I hope I have won you some money. We continue to be on a bit of a heater as of late. I've been sort of off of the spread betting and more on the player props. 
and those have been hitting. We had a big one come through for us this past Wednesday. It was Jay Crowder over one and a half threes, that hit. Then we had DeAndre Ayton over 10 and a half rebounds, that hit. Pascal Siakam over four and a half assists, pop. Davion Mitchell over 32 and a half points, rebounds, and assists. He crushed it. And then we had CJ McCollum over 22 and a half points in his return to Portland. That cash on the parlay. These player props have been solid. Almost hit one on Thursday night. Just needed a Russell Westbrook to come through with two made threes and he didn't make a single one. So that was a wah wah. But ready to respond through the weekend. Player props have been working really well for me. 28 and 11 in my real money plays on player props. So excited about that. And the spread picks aren't too bad either. On Thursday night going four or five ATS and then in the over unders I picked three and one. So we just continue to do what we can against the books. Gotta give a shout out to my sports betting community on Twitter. Appreciating the love and support y'all have given me since I started sharing my best bets and plays. Keep riding, we just wanna make some money. Next, we have the NBA and the association is in the playoff push and it is razor thin, especially in the East. The plans will make it all that more interesting and intriguing. Of course, leading the Eastern Conference by only half a game is the Miami Heat. While on the other side, the hometown team, the Suns, continue to roll, balling out this year, one win away from setting the franchise record. The Suns are at 62 wins on the season. Just an incredible run, especially after making the finals last season when nobody saw it coming and now being far and above the best team in the NBA. A really cool stat that was given to my attention when the Suns beat the Warriors on Wednesday night. The Suns 46-0 when leading into the fourth quarter. Absolutely incredible numbers. Devin Booker kind of sliding into the MVP race discussion as of late. I don't think he's going to win it. It's between Embiid, Jokic, and Giannis right now, the bigs. But Devin Booker does have a chance to make first team all NBA. He might get snubbed there, but I think he does end up on the second team at the very least. We shall see. And of course, just the supporting cast, you can't talk about it enough with Mikael Bridges, Jay Crowder, DeAndre Ayton in a contract season has come to play. And then the closer, Chris Paul, in such a good spot for this franchise. So soaked to see what the Suns do in the second straight postseason run after making it to the finals last year. You look at the playoff race in the East and all 10 teams that are still in contention in the conference within nine games of each other. That is just crazy. The Eastern Conference leading Miami Heat with the Bucks right on their heels and then the Celtics right behind them. Then you have the Sixers and the Bulls are picking up steam. The Raptors are right there. And then the play-in teams, Cavs, Nets, Hornets, Hawks, all right on top of each other. And the shuffling will continue until the very last game of the regular season. And it makes it all that more exciting. The Heat and the Bucks have been great all season long. Two veteran squads. And then the Brooklyn Nets, as of Friday, in the eighth spot in the East, losing all that ground when KD was out, trying to make up for it and get into a better playoff position. But we could see the Nets taking on the Heat or the Nets taking on the Bucks in the very first round. Still can't forget about some solid teams in the Western Conference. Of course, the Memphis Grizzlies, when John Morant is healthy, this team rolls. And Luka Doncic, how about that story? Leading the Mavs this season, he should be in the MVP conversation, of course, having Dallas all the way into the third seed 
as of Friday. And then Golden State, of course, Curry out for the remainder of the regular season. We'll see what happens with that team. It's just been up and down. And when all the pieces are together, the Warriors are a scary team. But when they're not missing either Draymond or Curry or Klay Thompson, it seems like they can't just be that team that everybody has expected of them. I mean, you have to give credit, though, to players like Jordan Poole. He's been outstanding for the Warriors. And then Denver, always scary with Jokic and the possible return of Jamal Murray for the postseason. We shall see. And the LA Clippers have clinched a play-in berth as of Friday. The other Los Angeles team, the Lakers, always in the headlines for whatever reason. This team has been absolutely pitiful all year long. LeBron James has done his best when he is in the game, but just been an abysmal year. Anthony Davis hasn't been able to stay healthy. The whole Russell Westbrook debacle. But how about the resurgence of Dwight Howard, huh? Without AD, he has had a few really solid games looking like vintage Dwight, and that's pretty much the only thing you should be talking about with this Lakers team. <laughs> Last week, we neglected the NHL, and I can't get myself to do that again this week. Of course, the playoff race happening in the NHL as well, pretty much uh, mirrored alongside the NBA season. The postseason race in the NHL isn't exactly as tight as it is in the NBA, but set to be a solid postseason nonetheless. The Colorado Avalanche have been putting on a similar performance to the Phoenix Suns, dominating the league. First to 100 points. The top of the East, you have the Florida Panthers, head and shoulders above the rest of the conference, seven points ahead of the next best team in the Toronto Maple Leafs. But we will get a postseason with the, some of the usual heavyweight contenders in the NHL. Of course, you'll have Tampa Bay in there. Then on the bubble, some big heavyweights with the Bruins and the Washington Capitals. And then in the Western Conference, my hometown team, the Nashville Predators, are expected to make the postseason. The fourth best team in the Central, three points ahead of the Dallas Stars. And then you look in the Pacific, the Preds are would be the third best team in the Pacific Division. So Nashville in the postseason with only 15, 14 games left for most of these teams. Nashville looking like it will make the postseason for the eighth straight year. Incredible mark for this franchise. Barring any epic collapse, if the Preds don't make it, I probably will cry myself to sleep for a week. But of course, the Western Conference, always so tough, especially come playoff time. We'll have to see how it all shakes out, and we'll keep an eye on it here down the stretch on the Schmidt Show. Now, it's time for some MLB notes here on the Schmidt Show. Spring training headed into the final week, and opening day is upon us. April 7th, we will have the beginning of regular season baseball should be a fun season ahead. We will keep a close eye on the home team Diamondbacks. The latest Arizona Diamondbacks news, second baseman Cattell Marte is signing an extension and first reported by Nick Pecoro of the AZ Republic who earned $76 million. Uh, he was entering the final guaranteed season on a five-year 24 million dollar extension he signed in March 2018. Now Marte gets a little bit more money, team friendly deal. It's set up best for both parties. Happy that the Diamondbacks will keep Marte to build around him. Of course Arizona with the solid farm system. Uh, not looking like Arizona will be very hot this season but the future Looks like it could go nowhere but up, and especially having Marte as a core piece 
looking like a much better future ahead here in the Valley. Next week, we will have our very first guest here on the Schmidt Show, Miller Thomas of Locked On Arizona Diamondbacks will join us for an MLB preview. So a little bit short here this week on the MLB talk, but we will have a nice block ready for opening day on the next edition of the Schmidt Show. So at the beginning of this past week, on Monday, I was doing a usual Arizona Prep Spotlight broadcast for a high school baseball game in Glendale at Apollo High School. And the Apollo Hawks were hosting the Sunrise Mountain Mustangs. And little did I know, I was in for one heck of a night. This game was tied up in the bottom of the seventh, the last inning of regulation in high school baseball off a two RBI double from Apollo's best hitter, second baseman Carlos Valencia. And then next thing you know, we have six straight scoreless extra innings. The closers for both teams just in an absolute pitching duel. And the bottom of the 13th ends on an egregious call. Uh, the lead runner for Apollo is tagged out at second when he was safe. And that sets everybody off for Apollo. The coaching staff, the parents, the fans, they're all getting on the ump just after this two-man crew. Expletives flying from the umpires and the Apollo coaching staff and the fans. And it was just insane. And I guess as the umpires ejected one of the coaches, he exchanged words with the umpires to try to get physical with them. And that's when uh, the field umpire got on the phone and I wasn't sure who he was talking to, whether he was trying to get a hold of his boss or what. And next thing I know, he was calling the cops because an officer shows up and she takes a full-fledged report. And then two more officers come after the fact and it was just absolutely wild never been a part of anything like that usually these games are like an hour and a half two hours long but this one ran over four hours and then the delay with the police report and everything being an extra 30 minutes i was there for almost five hours just insane. One gentleman ended up showing up. I don't know if he was the athletic director for Apollo or the AIA officiating supervisor, but he showed up and said, uh, everybody had to leave. The stands cleared out. I was able to stay because I was doing the broadcast and it turned into a ghost town just like that. And finally, after this delay was over, the action resumed and I was told that the game could go on as long as it takes to have a winner. And I didn't realize that was the rules for high school baseball. I thought regular season baseball, there'd be a cap where it would just end in a tie. But we were seven innings in and coming back from the break. But finally, Sunrise Mountain rips off six straight runs after the huge delay. And that was that. Sunrise Mountain ends up winning 12-7. to but easily the wildest game I've been a part of in my young sports broadcasting career. I'll have plenty more to come on Arizona High School Baseball, but that will wrap it up for sports on this edition of The Schmidt Show. Now we're getting into our culture and music side of things. Of course, the biggest story in the media, Hollywood, being Will Smith going on stage at the Oscars last Sunday and slapping Chris Rock for making a joke about his wife, Jada Pinkett Smith. The whole world reacted, blowing up to this incident. A lot of talk whether it was real or whether it was staged. I mean, the reactions between actors and actresses and people present at the Oscars made it feel real. And then we saw an apology from Will Smith ending it in, I'm still a work in progress. The dude's like 50, so I don't know what he's talking about there, but uh, just insane. I mean, 
to think that somebody would go and do this in front of thousands of people and then when it's televised in front of millions and millions of people this it makes you think you know how could how real could this be but you know it, at the end of the day it's definitely showing a sense of entitlement and i mean you could talk about there being toxic masculinity you know you got to step up and defend your woman and like a oh, oh, man or but like I don't know, like, just, I actually started watching Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, the original with Will Smith, and, like, just watching that and following Will throughout his career, never expected him to do something like that, and Chris Rock still isn't ready to talk about it, so we'll see what comes out of it, but that was a massive story throughout this past week. Now talking about music, some new projects dropping this week for some of my homies. Of course, we have Pilot Flying dropping a new tape. Pretty fire, go check it out. I've actually done some video work for Pilot, got to shoot a nightclub show with him and two other headline artists. That was a lot of fun. My dog, Boone, dropping a couple of songs in the last few weeks go check out his stuff i'll be sure to share the links actually getting back to making music videos going to be with these guys with some of their new projects so be on the lookout for some new music videos i'm set to produce i'm beyond excited i've always wanted to be a part of the music industry and finally getting my feet wet Directing, shooting, editing these videos is a lot of fun. And we are seriously about to get to work dive, diving into it. And as summer approaches, couldn't be a better time to be on board with The Schmidt Show as plenty of content is set to come y'all's way. I cannot emphasize enough how excited I am for not only my future, but the future and vision for this show going forward and just where we will be as we continue to pump out each episode. Of course, we'll have more guests as The Schmidt Show continues to grow. I would love any suggestions. Feel free to comment, reach out to me personally. However, you can get a hold of me, share your takes, whether or not they're hot or cold. We'll see your betting picks, best picks. Always down to ride with you. If you have a good feeling about something or have done your research, please continue to like, subscribe, share, whatever you can. I appreciate the love more than you know as we get this off the ground. And I promise it will continue to get better each week. That will do it for this second edition of The Schmidt Show. Again, your host and creator, Ethan Schmidt. Be sure to check out all of my work right here on my YouTube channel and follow me on Twitter at the Ethan Schmidt. I share all of my public betting picks on my Twitter, so be sure to find me on there. Appreciate you tuning in this week to another edition of The Schmidt Show. Wishing everyone a wonderful weekend. We'll see you next week.